welcome back, everybody. Time to grab your gear and take to the road. As we try and catch up with the entrepreneurs driving the e-bike revolution and the love stories of those just riding along. And today we got a little bit of both. We got a love story and an entrepreneurial couple. Let's welcome to the show uh, a couple of entrepreneurs that opened a store in Greenville, South Carolina. We'll hear about how and where and why and what it's like to work together. Laurel Zimmerman and Ashby Knox. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, thanks for having us. Before we yeah, launch into coming. your whole story, I just got to ask, we'll clear up the confusion here. Laurel Zimmerman, Ashby Knox, you're not married. You're life partners. Is that the way you look, describe yourselves here? And your partners in life, your partners in business. That's correct. So how does that work? Do you turn one off when you get home? Let's leave the work behind, or is it all just flow together into one continuous conversation? I think in the beginning, it was a lot of both, and we quickly <laughs> realized we needed to have a little space. Yeah. So I think we're pretty good now about separating it, and it'll leak into some conversations, but we, I think we're pretty good at Finishing that conversation, closing that down, and just having it be home. It's hard enough to get on the same page with your life. How is it to get on the same page about business, Ashby? Do you sometimes say, come on, why doesn't she see it my way? Come on, this is just makes so much sense. And then she'll say, no, we're not doing that. Uh, what, are you, what are you, crazy? I'm creating a fight here where there doesn't have to be one. But you have to work hard to maintain that balance and, 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 and the same perspective and where you're going in your business? Yeah, I think uh, definitely it, it, it has its moments. You know, two, <laughs> two people, no two people are going to agree all the time on everything. Right. You know, and we're running a business, so there's a lot of money involved as well. So right. it can have its moments, but I feel like in the end, as far as a balance, we really do. Like I noticed, you know, Mondays are one day off. And I was just like, you know, we get along so great when we're just at home and not at the shop. And, you know, <laughs> You know, we're just relaxing and yeah, kind of different having fun conversation, doing, doing right. some other stuff. So. Right. Well, I only ask because we haven't asked other couples, and there's a lot of couples that are working together. We had a couple on last week that's not only a couple. They've been together for a couple of decades, 30 years or something here, and had separate careers through that whole time. And now they've come together and they're working together. And then they brought in their three boys as well. And I think... I don't know if I could work with my daughter all the time either. It'd be fun on one level, but it's a different dynamic. Would I still be the dad trying to tell her what to do, or would she be my partner or my employee? And I'd say, hey, you can't get away with that. you got to clean this up. you got to be here on time. I don't know. It's a different dynamic at home than it is at work. That's all I know. What do you think, Laurel? I mean, we definitely have learned a lot. There were some stumbling blocks, and there were times where we definitely didn't agree on something, and we just had to learn how to sit down and kind of talk through and and decide the best way we were going to approach something and how we were going to, you know, approach when we disagreed about the best course of action. But right. And it's business. Know, after a year, I think we're, we figured it out pretty well. Well, I'm pleased that you figured it out. Let's talk about how you figured out to get here. Cause that's really the amazing part of this journey here. I'm looking at your quick resume that you wrote. Laurel says she liked cycling on trails but riding up and down the hills, particularly the humid southeast where you live, North Carolina, South Carolina, that was kind of taking the fun out of it. Is that where you were at when you stumbled onto an e-bike here? I had been out riding and just really huffing and puffing up some hills and just drenched in sweat in the summer when it's fun to get out. And I mentioned to a friend and they said, well, have you have you thought about an e-bike? <laughs> I was like, what is an e-bike? Yeah, right. I need to investigate this. Yeah. It sounds amazing. Well, and your friend, if I've got the story correct, was talking about doing a bike and barge trip. There's something I think would be incredibly cool to do. You take these little barges to the rivers of Europe and you bring a bike along. They stop in all these little quaint little towns in Germany or wherever they go. You're going to take the bike and you're going to go. You might end up riding 30 miles a day. It's like a spoken hub kind of thing. The hub is your boat. And then when it stops, you get off and you ride out into these little lanes. That's a lot of riding. And you sound like you're a little hesitant to do that day after day. Yeah. I mean, it was one thing to do 20 or 30 miles on our regular bikes because we weren't cyclists, cyclists, mm -hmm. where we weren't, you know, road biking. But I thought, well, I can do that one day, but five days in a row, that sounded daunting. And she said, oh, yeah, we were just going to choose a, an e-bike to do it. And that's really what sparked off, you know, exploring what an e-bike was. 
All right, Ashby, you had a different path here. You, uh, it sounds like you've been in uh, residential construction. You even have a degree in light construction. I never knew there was such a thing here. You did all this kind of work with your hands, and and then somewhere along the way, you decided to become a nurse. How? What? What led to that? Uh, to get an RN degree? How did that? That sounds like a hundred and eighty degree turn from where you were at. Yeah. Well, uh, at the time, I was uh, married to my ex-wife, and we started having children. So mm-hmm. I, I kind of became this stay-at-home dad. She's mm-hmm. an attorney, and I was, you know, working construction and doing things like that. But you know, she was the, the breadwinner at the time, so I. I kind of stayed, you know, uh, stayed home with the kids and I was thinking, well, what kind of job would allow me to be at home more? Right. Yeah, flexibility and scheduling. And I'd always thought about becoming a nurse, I'm, you know, some PAs, physical therapists, all that in my family. So it's kind of a natural fit. So, yeah. So while I was, you know, staying home, I was able to then take some night classes here and there to kind of get some of the co-requisites out of the way. So then I was able to start do the nursing program at the community college up in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Got done with that. And then again, you know, I was able to work a full-time job because you do three 12 hour shifts a day right. and still be at home four days a week. With yeah. Kids, right. So, right. So, it, you know, it just kind of worked out well. And so I was, I did that for about 12 years. I still have my license, but I kind of, kind of just jumped on to Laurel's coattails on this, this bike shop adventure. And, and here we are. Rode along. Well, I can see why she was attracted to riding because she has one of the coolest, not that what you did wasn't cool, but I've heard other people do that. I've never heard anybody do this. She worked full time for Outward Bound. Outward Bound is a worldwide organization. I know. There's like 12 bases around the country. And we had five bases down in South Carolina, Florida, and Alabama, too. And tell us what a base is. These mostly companies, but individuals can go there, too, and they, as you say, stretch your comfort zone. They make you get out into the wilderness and hike and bike and climb and do challenging things, either to push yourself or to bond as a team, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a leadership school based on expeditionary travel. There's no better way to have an ability to work with a team and face some challenges and figure out how to get through them than being out in nature. And when you do it as an expedition travel, you've got to get from point A to point B and you have to figure out how to do it. And so we would go out on 30 day courses, canoeing, backpacking, sea kayaking. And you're talking about suburban, urban people like me, that wilderness is something I see flying over or driving through, getting me out of the car and getting me to climb and to zip line or to uh, camp and do things that I'm just I'm just not comfortable if, if there's not a hotel nearby. Yeah, I mean, that's the best part of having people come from that same environment <laughs> and seeing them stretch in a way they never have and really understand what that means. It's not, you know, yes, you learn camping skills and technical things like that, but it's more about what you learn about yourself and, and what you're capable of and what you can do and how you can work. Pretty exciting. It must seem strange. You were raised, it says, in a small town in Idaho. That's pretty rural. That's pretty out there. And so yeah. it, outdoors is all around you. It's just part of every day. Hiking, skiing. Hey, the hills are right there. The mountains are right there. The trails are right there. So my impression, having never grown up in those areas, that people live in rural America just think this is an ordinary way of life. You ride horses, you ski, you climb, you hike, you do these types of things. And you get city folk like me that come out there. It's like the movie City Slickers years ago with Billy Crystal or something here. You know, we just all look like we don't even know what we're doing. Yet somehow you, you weave them together and turn them into a team. Yeah, and then they and then they leave with those skills that they never had. And it's great. And then they, you know, they can go on and do those adventures on their own or with other groups. But I think it's bigger, you know, what they take back inside, which is so exciting. So you grew up in the outdoors. You go and work for Outward Bound. You're used to riding bikes, but it's getting a little harder. The hills and the heat and the humidity. And somehow you stumble into an e-bike store. What did Ashby say when you, he said, go, go for it. Or is he like, no, I'll ride along. I can remember where we talked about it. Um, I had been researching and crunching numbers and, and doing, you know, kind of really digging into it. And we were on a walk on a rail trail as <laughs> bikes were passing us. And I said, you know, I'm kind of thinking, you know, I've been talking about doing e-bikes and we can't find any 
around here to rent or try. And I'm kind of thinking there's a hole in the market yeah. and I think I want to do that. Yeah. And uh, he was like, huh. Kind of, I don't know. Maybe it's better for him to. Yeah, well, I want to hear his. Is that all it was? It's like, huh, maybe. Like, just all I think about. What do you think, Ashby? First, she's, you're getting this uh, outward bound girl taking you out. You're the stay at home parent. You're a nurse. You're taking care of people. That doesn't sound like an outward bound profile here. And she's taking you out into the wilderness and riding and going things. And now she wants to go further and open a business about this. But, and neither of you have a business background. No, no, neither one of us have any, you know, kind of business or sales experience, really. I guess Laurel does a little more with her out, outward yeah, stuff. Like right. She was an instructor and then a course director yeah. and other things. And then and she stuff. was the head Admission. of the admissions department and stuff, too. So, but no, and I've always been kind of active. I've, I've run 24 marathons in my life. Wow. Um, okay. Good I did Boy you. Scouts and Cub Scouts with my boys. So I've, I've been out in the, in the wilderness on myself, too. But, but no, when she first brought up the idea, it was, you know, it's basically, you know, she'd wanted to go ride for her birthday on an e-bike and couldn't <laughs> find one. So then she's saying, yeah, I'm thinking I might want to do this. I was like, you know, that sounds interesting. You you go find your way, you know, do your thing, whatever, yeah. you know, I'll help support you however you want. Right. You know? So, you know, she just kept kind of looking at different models of how to do it. She stumbled upon Pedigo and she was, you know, one evening we're at home. She was just telling me about Pedigo, all the stuff, she, you know, all the support and all the stuff that they provide yeah, right. um, for their dealers. And I said, we don't have well, to do this alone, do right? Because she's yeah, outward like, bounded. We got to have a team. We got to do yeah, this. Yeah, well, as a team, I was just right? like, well, if I was going to do this, I, if I was you, I would go with them because I was like, they've already got the blueprint there. For yeah. Me. Right. You know, you kind of follow what their, you know, their advice and stuff. And, you know, it, it's bound to be successful. And then after thinking about that for a few days, and I was like, you know, with COVID going on, being a nurse kind of got a little less fun. A lot of people got burned out of the profession during their period of time, the extreme stress. The extreme yeah, demands. Yeah. So uh, I was like, well, maybe I want to do something different for a little while. And I said, well, hey, how about, you know, we go 50 50 on this thing. And like I say, we're, we're 14 or so months into it now and we're, we're enjoying it and good. So what do you think, Laurel? Just looking for support or were you looking for another 50 50 partner? Did you want to extend your life partnership into business as well? Or were you just looking for some support for you to try this thing? Yeah, no, I was I was kind of shocked when he said that, that he wanted to do that. And as we started to talk about it, you know, and what that would really mean, because that's, you know, we were very different schedules, very different jobs. Yeah, somebody's so got to be in the through. store now, and you got to be there all the time. And <laughs> Yeah, and so as we talked about it more, it just, it sounded more exciting. And we really started getting into all the little bits of it, and and it worked out pretty well. Does it help that both of you like to help people? I mean, I hear that loud and clear. Helping people go out and do something they've never done and outward bound. Helping people as a nurse. Helping raise your kids. It sounds like there's a commonality here. You two like helping people. You're not computer geeks sitting in the corner just working alone. Yeah. I'd say that's probably the biggest part of this job. Like, the e-bikes are fun. Mm -hmm. But it's the people and seeing how it changes their lives or just, you know, the excitement on their face when they get back from a test ride or yeah. a rental and, and just how that, and, and just stories we hear from them. I think that's the biggest. Um, what, what do you think, Ashby? Is it, is it just an extension of you helping another way here? Definitely. And that was, that was kind of a thing I hadn't really thought of. But you get these folks in here that never thought they were going to ride a bicycle again. Right. You know, loved riding bikes their whole lives, but they have a knee problem or a hip problem. And now, you know, to be able to see that smile on their face when they when they are you know out riding, all because you know we're here and we were able to kind of get them on a bike. So you know, we just have all so many great stories like that. Support now. them, show them the way. Yeah, exactly. I. That's the part that surprises me most of this podcast. I never thought it's business. And so business is, yeah, you want to enjoy it and you want to believe in your product. And I get all that. But if I'm selling washing machines, I don't think I'm going to change people's lives. They might like the machine. They might like me. They might come back another one. But I don't think they're just going to come back and hang out with me. Do people come back and hang out with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> they really do. They really do. Um, yeah, they definitely do. And isn't that weird? You go hang out at the stores after you buy. Do you get out of the paint store and say, "Hey, just stopping by. How you doing, Joe? What paint you got in today?" 
I, uh, I definitely don't do that or, or, or washing machines or anything like that either, or, or auto mechanics or any yeah. of those. You know, so, I like the current. Again, it's like we encourage it. We encourage it. You know, we're like, hey, stop in. We got a you know thing you can refill your water bottle. We've got bathrooms, so they stop in all the time. You know, just to show us their bike or you know, hey, this is something going on. I'm able to fix it in just like a you know quick little five minute fix. So yeah. it's no big deal. You know, so it's it's definitely like a family kind of feel to it. And, it sounds uh, like you know, it. We really enjoyed our our Palooza we had with all the folks we had. Oh, cool! Know, bought bikes. So, what uh, happens in, in a April. Palooza? Further, we've talked a little bit about Palooza, not a lot. We, we probably should talk more about them. What happens in a Palooza like yours? Well, it's basically a customer appreciation kind of party yearly for for our customers, mm-hmm. you know, or any Pedego owner around. Because we started up in May of twenty twenty one. And uh, there were already folks in Greenville that had bought pedigos from other de- dealers in South Carolina that had been right. here a while. So as we've gotten to know them, they know we're here to help them and support them and fix their bikes if they need anything. But again, it's just like a, a once a year customer appreciation kind of party. We raffle off prizes. We cater a meal for them. We had a big barbecue feast oh, and wow. uh, then a big, a big group ride, which here in Greenville, there's the Swamp Rabbit Trail. Swamp Rabbit thing. Trail, another one of these rails to trails. We keep talking about trying to get them on a show here. This idea is a national movement to take these old rail lines that aren't being used and turn them into trails now. Yeah, so that's what that's the big one here. And that was pretty much why we moved to Greenville. Hmm. You know, we were both living in North Carolina before we we did this. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so anyways, it's it's you know it's been great. You know, this is just the location. We're right near the Swamp Rabbit Trail. So people can get on and, you know, go for a ride. Um, it's like 11 plus miles long and they're extending it as well. So it's been a great location for us for, for rentals, but then also for sales for, you know, folks that, that want to buy them. So. so Laurel, I would think of all the dealers we've talked to, you've got to be the best person prepared to do group rides because you did group outdoor adventures. You started off as a trainer and then eventually moved into the corporate world part of it. But you got this has got to be second nature to you taking people out into the wilderness yeah i mean i love working with groups and doing tours and i just like our group rides it's so nice to get other people to meet each other it's, it's pretty fun and plus then i get to go ride <laughs> and i like that and is your impulse to push them like an outward bound come on we're gonna take that hill or do you just take it a little easier on them here no, they are way faster than me. <laughs> There's some times where I ride sleep and I can't keep up. So <laughs> they're, yeah, they're all good. Sometimes I'll be back with some folks who are going a little bit slower, but no, no, I'm not the one pushing them. They're pushing me. Come on, Ashby, tell us the truth. I always picture, and I've never been in an Outward Bound Adventure. I've certainly read about them through the years. They sound incredible, but they sound a little intimidating to me. Like they're going to push you past your comfort level to do things you didn't think you could do. And I picture that's the way Laurel is on the ride. No, she she likes to just kind of take it easy and, you know, see the sights and stuff. So she's just along to, to enjoy the ride. <laughs> okay. I'm the one usually in the front going, hey, let's go 20 miles an hour. <laughs> no, no, she's no. more of a, a, you know, 11 to 15 mile an hour kind of gal. So, okay. Um, All right. But it works. It works. It works. All right. Well, it sounds like the whole thing works in Greenville, South Carolina. If I'm going to open up an e-bike system across the country, I don't know that I'd think of Greenville, South Carolina as the ideal place to do it. I think of the beaches. I think of big uh, urban areas. But Greenville's what? An old uh, mill town, isn't it? Greenville has a secret that... Okay. Um, and their hashtag is, yeah, that Greenville. Because <laughs> people are like, Greenville? Greenville, But yeah. they have spent a lot of years thinking through the urban development of their downtown. So they took what used to be a polluted and like interstate covered river. That's kind of my impression of it. I was years ago, I went through there and I thought, boy, this is like, just like one of these old, sort of like the Rust Belt, but with old mills. Yeah. So there's, um, so the Swamp Rabbit Trail, which was the rail trail, um, it goes right through downtown and they've turned it into this lush, beautiful garden along the river oh. lots of like lovely hotels and concert venues but like beautiful we're talking you about know, that greenville greenville that, south carolina that greenville. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> and then uh yeah so it's gorgeous and then all of these old mills have been turned into places like we're in right now which is an old abandoned cotton warehouse mm-hmm. and they turned it into breweries restaurants 
shops. And so we have a nice little community here and then others are being turned into apartments. So it's a very cool little town and lots of bird lines to connect neighborhoods to get downtown. So wow. becoming a, a bike town for sure. Well, it's got to have a guy named Ashby Knox. I got to do the accent <laughs> once here. That just sounds like Ashley Wilkes from Gone with the Wind. Ashby Knox. You said that was a family name or something? Probably goes back generations. Old Southern names here, right? Yeah, that was, that was my great grandmother's maiden name. And then she named her son Ashby Turner. That was my mom's favorite uncle, so <laughs> she named me after him. So, And you've got the big beard and the, the wonderful soft accent, and uh, I just picture you as uh, the ideal southern gentleman down here. Uh, yeah. well, the to- beard's off because Cassidy said that that's how he pictured a, a bike machine. <laughs> oh. Cassidy said that. He's like, that's all he's his vision. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to try and. Try you and just grew it. it to fit the, oh, i got a beard, yeah, so maybe the, I'm set up to be a bike mechanic yeah, here. Fit, fit yeah. the titles. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for letting us share this story about Greenville, about your amazing journey, and about your story as life partners and now business partners here. Riding the Swamp Rabbit Trail here together, pushing people out past their comfort zone or maybe into their comfort zone. Maybe that's it. You're not pushing them past it. You're pushing them into a comfort zone. Is that a better way to say it, Laurel? Yeah, I mean, and and maybe past their comfort zone when they thought they would never be on a bike again. So I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Well, a fun story, a fun ride. And I thank you for coming on and sharing it with us here today. And I don't want to miss the chance to, where's the store at Ashby? I was going to get a shout out to where the store is. Yeah. So we're, uh, again, the, the, uh, old cotton warehouse we're in, it's, uh, it's called Hampton station. Can again, you just, other just say that stuff. again? I just love hearing Southern accent. Is that old, yeah. everything starts with uh, that old, that old cotton warehouse. That old, my old dog down by the old <laughs> cotton warehouse. Right. Yeah. We're, it's called Hampton station. And, okay. uh, so our, our, uh, address is 1320 Hampton Avenue. Uh, we're in Bay 11A and it's right here in Greenville, South Carolina. And then our, uh, Phone number is 864-565-9600. And we'd love for, you know, anybody out traveling around with their pedigo. We always love to have folks stop in and come on say by. Hello to us. Love to see y'all. <laughs> That's right. All right. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, there's a love story and an entrepreneurial story as well of two people who took an unexpected turn in their lives went down the swamp rabbit trail together here bringing others along for the ride thanks for joining us hope you'll hear more as we continue to talk with the entrepreneurs driving the e-bike revolution and the love stories of those riding along on the pedigo podcast for more information just visit pedigo.com